All right, so this is lesson one in the Statistics in Society unit. Um, we are looking at bias today and other influencing factors that affect data collection. So the goal by the end of this unit is for you to be able to design your own survey that is free of any bias and influencing factors and then collect the data and analyze it and present it in a way that is not misleading. Um, so this is kind of step one in that process and we're learning how to ask a good survey question today. Um, I'm going to go through these, this answer key. If you're doing it along with me, yours might be blank and not have this blue writing here. I'm going to highlight all of the keywords in yellow and then anything else important as I read through in blue. Okay, so when we survey a population, we must be careful to ask questions that are free from influencing factors. So things that can have effect on the responses that we don't want. So we're going to go through a number of these influencing factors talk about what they are, give some examples, and then we're going to see some questions and ask how we can improve them and what influencing factors are affecting them. Okay, so first one here is bias. So bias is a preference for a particular object or group. So a good example of this is let's say you wanted to know what people's preferred breakfast foods are. So what do you like to eat for breakfast? You go to a grocery store and you set up your survey in the cereal aisle. That introduces some bias because people who are in the cereal aisle probably like cereal. So you might get more responses for cereal than the population really would normally have. Um, so that, so your survey has bias in it there. Okay, another ex example of an influencing factor is just how you ask the question, your language. So um, an example here is, Let's say you want to know if people want dogs to be allowed on the beach, but you ask it this way. Don't you think dogs should be allowed on the beach? That kind of leads the responder to say, yeah, sure, I guess so, right? They, they're more likely to say yes um, in this one, especially if there's someone who doesn't, you know, likes to avoid awkward moments or confrontation. Instead, just be more neutral. Say, do you think dogs should be allowed on the beach? Timing. You got to think of timing. So an example here would be like, let's say it's July and an outdoor club wants to know about what ski brands their members prefer. They're not probably not skiing in the middle of July, so it's probably not on the top of their minds. They might not answer the question um, as accurately as if you ask them in the winter when they're using their skis all the time. Privacy. This one is very important, especially when you're asking personal questions in a public setting. Um, an example would be, let's say a principal came to your classroom and they asked the students if they liked their school. Um, you know, that's a person of authority with some power. People might not be comfortable being honest in that situation. They might be more likely to say they do like the school even if they don't. Um, so it'd be better to give the students an anonymous setting where they could answer that question. Um, yeah, or not with a person of authority. That might in impact their answer. Ethics. So it's important to have honesty and integrity when conducting your survey. So let's say there is a travel company. This has actually happened to me a number of times. It doesn't have to be a travel company. It could be any company and they want you to give them a five star rating and then they offer you like some kind of perk, like a discount if you give them a five star rating. Um, so then people are giving them all these five star ratings when that might not be the way they actually feel. They just want the discount. Um, so that survey doesn't have much integrity um, and you can't really get an accurate reading on what people actually um, rate the company. Cultural sensitivity. It's important to keep your survey open and be sensitive of um, other cultures and be as inclusive as possible. So, and, and just a quick example here, let's say a teacher surveyed their class about which Christmas carols were their favorite. That's not really cult culturally sensitive because Many of their students might not celebrate Christmas, for example. Um, okay, so those are the influencing factors there. There's six in total. So we're gonna have a look at some questions now and see which influencing factors are affecting them and how we can improve them. So here's a question. Isn't Starbucks a great place to get coffee? That question is leading the person to say yes, right? And it's even introducing Starbucks in the, in the answer there. So I would say this is a language problem. You might keep your question more open, like you might say something like, what's your favorite place to get coffee? Or if you wanna give them some options, you can, but um, keep it open uh, and neutral. 
Okay, a teacher asks students to put their hand up if they're feeling more anxious than usual today. I would say this is a privacy issue because students might not want to make it public knowledge that they're feeling anxious. Uh, so maybe it's better to ask this in private or ask this in an anonymous way um, if they want to check in with their students. Okay, what language do you speak at home? Uh, English or French? This is not very culturally sensitive because it's assuming people only speak those two languages, which is of course not true. Um, so it's better to keep this more neutral so people can respond with a number of answers. So you can even just ask, what language do you speak at home? And finally, a road through a park would really ease traffic and make life better for everyone. Um, are you in favor of adding the road? This is a bias issue because you are in your question saying that the preferred response is that you respond, yes, I'm in favor of adding the road because you've given this, this positive impact that the road will have when you have not said anything about any negative impacts the road might have. Um, so it's better to keep it neutral. So for example, uh, there's a proposal to put a road through the park. Are you in favor? Right? So not introducing any bias there. All right. So that's a good summary of all of the um, influencing factors. So when you make your own surveys, you need to make sure that you keep all of these in mind and don't have any influencing factors in your question.